Go ahead. Mr. President-elect, go ahead. Can you say categorically a question? Mr. President-elect, can you give us a question? Don't be rude. Can you give us a question? Don't be rude. No, I'm not going to give you a question. I'm not going to give you a question. You are fake news. Sir. I'm Dr. Dave Janda. Welcome back to Dave versus the MSM. I'd like to thank you for joining me today. We are available 24-7 at DaveJanda.com with extra shows, extra content, extra guests, extra analysis, archives to all of our shows. We hope you become part of our Freedom family. A number of people have asked me, you know, Dave, uh, you are incredibly suppressed on, on, on YouTube. Why do you keep doing these videos? Because... If you look at the view counts and you look at what they do with monetization and what they do with oppression and blocking notifications and blocking view counts and blocking comments that I don't have any control over, why do you keep doing it? And the answer is because they're doing this to make me just throw my hands up in the air and say, forget it. And I will never relent to A, let alone any, let alone all globalist scum and their freedom stripping agenda. See, my hope is with these videos that it educates you, provides you information you're not getting, and then hopefully that you take this information and deliver it to your friends, families, coworkers, neighbors, maybe even people you don't even know, to help educate them. And, and my other hope is that you'll say, you know, I'm going to support what they do in Operation Freedom. And their subscription site is 30 cents a day for a huge amount of content, plus access to all of our archives and content that I cannot go into on a social media platform or on the radio. I'm going to support them at 30 cents a day, and I'm going to do it for a month, nine bucks. And after a month, I'm going to get rid of it. I'm not sure why anyone would, because why would you want to be adrift in this deep sea of deep state cult chaos because we provide you a lifeboat with that information to put you ahead of the curve and, and that brick wall that they want to run you into to shatter your life and your freedom and your future in our constitutional republic. But that's the hope. Now, unfortunately, there are a lot of people, and I've outlined in previous videos, who just, okay, well, I'll take in the information. I'm not going to do anything with it. I'm going, to keep, I'm going to sit on the couch. I'm not going to do anything. And I'm surely not going to spend 30 cents a day on uh, supporting a platform. Okay. Well, realize that those of us that are not controlled opposition, that don't have Big Daddy behind us shooting us money to making us look like we're independent when, in fact, many are not. We are. There are no big sugar daddies. And... It costs not just my time, which is, I know, zero, but an IT team to modify these videos and what the AI platform sees so you get to see them costs a lot of money. And having a website costs a lot of money. So this, as I mentioned before in previous videos, it can only go on so long. And the hope is that people will value what we do here and say, I'm going to support you for a month or two months. I'm going to do it for a couple months. I'm going to do it for, I'm going to do it for you. Whatever. That's the hope. Then again, hope <laughs> is not a strategy. I start with H.L. Mencken, an American journalist in the early 1900s. Quote, the most dangerous man to any government is the man who's able to think things out for himself without regard to the prevailing superstitions and taboos. Almost inevitably, he comes to the conclusion that the government he lives under is dishonest, insane, and intolerable. And we should also add criminal. Today's topic is a cult member's life. Launder money, censor, spy, and lie. Under the launder money, House Republicans released bank records showing over $20 million in payments to the Biden family associates. Devin Archer spills the beans, you know, the business partner of Hunter Biden, 
tells Congress about shady Burisma deal, you know, that benevolent en energy company in Ukraine that Hunter said on the board that, well, Biden, they laundered tens of millions of dollars out of over time when it comes out. And Joe Biden's more than 20 conversations with Hunter's business partners. Many people say, well, you know, okay, okay, they, they had a business relationship, but that didn't generate any, any particular policy initiatives that benefited them. Well, then how about this with the money laundering? Uh, Biden Energy Secretary, Granholm, former governor here in the state of Michigan, doesn't even know how to pump her own gas, consulted top Chinese energy official before the strategic petroleum release. Remember that strategic petroleum re release that was to, to go to Americans that got sent over to China. Right? In fact, the sales of the strategic petroleum reserve were actually linked to the Hunter Biden Chinese energy giant that he was linked to. U.S. Energy Secretary Jennifer Granholm, whose catastrophic handling, this from Zero Hedge, of U.S. energy policy will be one of the most memorable and dire consequences of the Biden era. Engaged in multiple conversations with Chinese government's top energy official just days before the Biden administration announced it would tap the Strategic Petroleum Reserve to combat high gas prices. That would be the same China whose Hunter Biden linked energy giant Unipec which we previously learned had bought millions of barrels from the Strategic Petroleum Release. IRS whistleblowers talking about money laundering. From the thousands of financial records we've obtained, we know the Biden family set up over 20 shell companies, engaged in intentionally complicated financial transactions with foreign adversaries, and made a concerted effort to hide payments and avoid scrutiny. The two whistleblowers were Gary Shipley and Joseph Ziegler. In their testimony about money laundering of the criminal syndicate, including the Bidens, the money the IRS found that was paid to Hunter Biden and Associates between 2014 and 2019, just to name a few years, were from Romania, $3.1 million, from a Chinese energy giant subsidiary. Oh, you mean like the one that, that was linked to the Strategic Petroleum Reserve? $3.1 million. Hudson West, another Chinese energy conglomerate, $3.7 million. Burisma, you know, the one that Devin Archer talked about, all the 20 conversations. Yeah, you know, that benevolent Ukrainian natural gas and oil company, $6.5 million. Total foreign income streams, minimum $17 million. And as we have seen, there's been $120 billion, at least that we're aware of, undoubtedly more, Money, taxpayer, U.S. taxpayer money that could well have been spent on people in this country. Oh, no, it was sent over to that goat rodeo in Ukraine. Why? Well, could it be that that's leverage money that Biden is paying to cover up? Not just his crimes, but how about the big guy's crimes? Who's that? I thought Joe Biden was the big guy. Now, you know, when you look at the Hunter Biden laptop, I talked about this since in 2020. Uh, when we started talking about Hunter Biden's laptop months before the election, uh, in that laptop, there are email communications where Hunter Biden is upset that I got to pay my old man 50%, not 10, 50% of what I get. Okay, so if Joe's getting 50%, and the big guy's getting 10, who do you think the big guy is? Do you think that these policies start and stop in, in the past and currently with Biden? When Biden was a vice president, he has no control over policy. That's all out of the West Wing and Barack Obama, who was president. Do you think in the community organizer's mind, a dastardly mind, by the way, do you think that he was letting this happen and letting the Biden skate by and get all this money and he wasn't going to get a cut? You see, all this protection of Joe Biden and Hunter Biden, they're protecting their trophy, at least for the time being. The big O. Because he's the big guy.
And they want to divert your attention that the big guy is Joe. Oh, no. Because we know from Hunter Biden's laptop, Joe was getting 50%. Right there, black and white, in Hunter's laptop. But the Taliban in Afghanistan, oh, you know, that whole goat rodeo, that disaster of us getting out of there. The Taliban's looking at Ukraine and go, okay, they got this information on Biden. And they're extorting him for billions of dollars. Let's get in on that game. Biden has handed to Taliban over $2 billion in U.S. taxpayer funds over the past two years. Oh, come on now, that's conspiracy theory. Well, not according to the Special ins Inspector General for Afghan Reconstruction. Inspector General. Notes that the Biden administration has given $2 billion, $350 million to Afghanistan over the past two years. Uh, wait a minute, isn't this the same administration that they're so pro-women's rights? Yeah, they're, we're the number one pro-women's rights administration in the, ever in the history of the United States. Well, Afghanistan is a woman-hating, women's rights-stripping operation. They're a cult. Hmm? Yeah. And $2.3 billion of U.S. taxpayer money is going there. Because guess what? They're running the same operation on the Biden crime family and Obama than they, as they are in Ukraine. Hey, this is what we got on you. You want us to talk about it? Starts with a B. Start handing it over. Speaking about money laundering Newsom funded a Chinese lab known to Biden's FDA that was involved with can't say it because of this platform oh right The discovery last month of a Chinese biolab in California shocked the nation, but likely came as no surprise to the state's Democrat governor, Gavin Newsom, why he helped fund it. This organization has strong ties to the Chinese Communist Party and received nearly 400,000 in tax credits from Newsom's Office of Business and Economic Development. The, in addition, the Meditech company was awarded its business license from the Newsom administration. We have had Paul Preston on our, on our platform on a regular basis. Paul is uh, running the New California Movement. They have documented the financial ties between Gavin Newsom and the Communist Chinese Party. It's all about money laundering. And it's also about censoring information from getting out. There is a case, the Missouri versus Biden administration, which is uh, actually going pretty fairly in our direction in the freedom movement. Recently, the Missouri versus Biden censorship case got its day in court. This according to Dr. Jay Bashara. The Biden administration argued that the pandemic gives it the right to violate the First Amendment of American citizens. And the Biden administration has the right to censor even true speech criticizing its positions. How special is that? Now, here's the interesting thing. The judges aren't taking it. Not so veiled threats. This is from Zero Hedge. Judge compares Biden regime to mafia for strong arming social media companies. By the way, impregnated within those social media companies are what I have told you are choke points that choke information, truth from getting to you. Has been for since the inception of these social media. Who do you think brought about these social media? You think Zuckerberg is an affront for the agency? Gates is an affront? The Googleistas aren't fronts? They're all fronts. A three-judge panel excoriated the mob-like Biden administration over its long-arm tactics to bully social media companies into complying with censorship requests, which time and time again proved to be true. Hmm. Huh. Representing the government was attorney Daniel Tenney. He had quite a trio when he was done of really miffed off judges on his hands. 
At one point, Jennifer Walker Elrod compared the Biden administration to the mafia. Quote, In these movies that we see with the mob, they, they don't say and spell out things, but they have these ongoing relationships. They never actually say, go and do this, or else you're going to have this consequence, but everybody just knows, end quote. And for those of you thinking that uh, Elon Musk is the answer to the censorship issues, in fact, as I have outlined, because I remain suspended off of Twitter without being told why, which is against their own terms of agreement, in terms of use, Musk's ex-partners with conservative blacklisted company, it's a deal with the devil. Elon Musk, the social media company, formerly known as Twitter, signed an exclusive partnership with a misinformation tracker linked to a government-funded blacklisting conservative media outlets record show. X is teaming with, up with Integral Ad Science, an adver, adver, adver verification company. This group is affiliated with the Global Disinformation Index, a British group with two affiliated U.S. nonprofit groups that the U.S. with the that the Washington Examiner revealed is covertly feeding blacklists of conservative websites to advertisers to defund disfavored speech. And that's frankly the same reason, folks, why this platform, the view counts are bogus. They're bogus. They want you to think that these videos are not popular. Plus, by having bogus view counts that are many hundreds of times viewership than what you're seeing listed, they don't have to pay any ad revenue to me or a number of the independent media non-controlled opposition outlets trying to starve us out. It's all bogus. And it is a crime. Which brings us to spying. March 19th, 2017, General Tom McInerney, with the assistance of Admiral Ace Lyons, came on our radio show live and spoke about how the then Barack Obama administration, along with the CIA and the FBI, and the Department of National, uh, National Intelligence, had commandeered a, a platform called the Hammer to illegally spy on political opponents by the tens of thousands. White House, this is in 2023, August. The White House backs renewal of law enabling spying on Americans. The Joe Biden administration released a report endorsing the renewal of a controversial law which enables U.S. intelligence agencies to spy on foreign nationals and American citizens. And now, <laughs> the lie. Wow, we, the, you know, cult members like lying. I mean, right, uh, you, you name it. A every day there are thousands that these Republicrats, remember, one political party owned and operated by a criminal syndicate, the globalist cult, they incessantly lie to you to keep you uninformed, misinformed, and disinformed. But, and, and there are a confluence of lies over the past three years over this and this, right, that I can't go into, obviously, on this platform, that I do on my own DaveJanda.com website. But just look at the Russian collusion hoax, right? So it's now come out. The Steele dossier was paid for by Hillary Clinton, the DNC. It was fabricated. That it was Hillary Clinton, the DNC, colluding with Russians to try to frame Trump that the Russian collusion Trump was in fact a hoax that was bought and paid for. And this has been confirmed through the Durham report. We told you this many years ago. But this happened this week. FBI special agent who investigated Trump-Russian collusion to, is now pleading guilty to conspiring with who? So this is the guy who was helping run the operation to push the fake Russian collusion Trump hoax to benefit the cult and their puppet, Hillary Clinton. 
So who was this guy colluding with? He was conspiring with a Russian oligarch. FBI Special Agent Charles McGonagall will be pleading guilty to conspiring with a Russian oligarch. Earlier this year, former special agent in charge of counterintelligence. So this wasn't some little dweeb. He's the agent in charge of counterintelligence in the New York field office. This Charles McGonagall scum was arrested for conspiring with Oleg Deripaska. Deripaska. Deripaska, a sanctioned Russian oligarch. This FBI scum was integral in the fake Russian collusion hoax. And again, folks, if that's not a big enough lie for you, then look at the past three years about this and about this. And the few of us that have a medical background that stood up early and often and told you what it was really about. We're targeted, terrorized, slandered, libeled, misrepresented, defamed, and threatened. And who's doing all that? Right. The cult and their puppets. The only way around this and this might be, I know it's unpopular among some fake people, is to not sit there and take it too peacefully. Get off the couch. Network these videos. Network the information to everyone you know and love. Wake them up. Not woke. Wake. Awaken them. Different than woke. Awaken them. So they can awaken others. Because there comes a point in time when the awakening is so great that it melts the cult. I thank you for joining me today. We are available 24-7 at DaveJanda.com. I hope you stop by. I hope you become part of our freedom family. Until next time, Dave Janda signing off. Dream big and dare to fail. Thanks for your time today.